But if you get into any of those areas, I don't care if it's NetConf Yang with Python or, or uh, you know, uh, Viptela software defined WAN or Cisco DNAC or software defined access, you're distinguishing yourself uh, from the rest of the pack. The more the better. The more you can get your hands on, the better. Yes, yeah, very good point. I mean, I mean, I think it's exactly right. You've got to market yourself um, because the way that you stand out is to be different and That's learn right. this new stuff. I look at a lot of resumes. Wanna shake the ground, wanna break away, let loose. I'm tired of waiting, gonna make that move. I look at a lot of resumes. Yeah, well let's well let's let's switch to that then. Okay. Because you I'm glad you said that. So you look at a lot of resumes. So what advice would you give to someone who you like, on their resume? And then let's turn this into like a job thing. So if I want a yeah. job with you, how can I make my prospects better? The very first piece of advice I would give anybody is proofread your resume. I cannot tell you how many I get that are, have misspellings, grammatical errors. The one that kills me is when people are inconsistently wrong. Like if you're going to be wrong, be wrong consistently. You shouldn't be wrong at all. But yeah, so they'll, they'll put a a period after a uh, after a word uh, or excuse me a space after a word when a period follows it and then like the next time they won't do that or they'll have a bullet list and they'll have a period on like three of the items at the end and not on two like for me especially working in marketing even if it is technical marketing um, if you can't market yourself if you don't have a clean res if you haven't edited if you haven't taken the time to present something to me that's readable uh, then forget it I mean that's going to go in the garbage right away that's that's number one. The second thing, you, you definitely have to, I used to have just one resume and I'd go hand it out. Sometimes you have to do that. You go to a job fair or something. But as much as you can, tailor it to the job you're applying to. Um, you know, if, I, if I get a generic resume of a network engineer for a technical marketing engineer job, okay, they may be, they may be good. I may consider it. But if somebody presents me with a resume that... Um, Maybe they've never done technical marketing in their life, but they gave a presentation somewhere. So they add it in there because yeah. we do presentations. Yeah. Uh, find out about the job you're applying for. Try to figure out what they're looking for. I mean, if you have a job opportunity and they want a network engineer who knows about automation, you know, put in the Python course that you did. You know, make sure that it's tailored to what you're doing. That's interesting. So you're, tailing, you, you're making a tailored copy of your um, resume. Right. for that position right if you're serious about it yeah if you're serious i mean again if you're blanketing a, you know a large number of opportunities you may not be able to do that um, but yeah, if you find something you're interested in you should when i applied for this job i mean i came in as a technical marketing engineer from a quite a diverse background but i made sure to highlight um, the different things that i did that were marketing oriented and uh, that helped a lot um, other things I think I mentioned, you know, having a good, you know, something that distinguishes you. Think about, just think about uh, what makes me different. Yeah. I actually heard people, I, I used to hate this term, but I, I don't know, I've kind of grown to adopt it, developing a personal brand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, 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 see, we're, we're, kind of, we're gearheads, right? We're, 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 we're technical people. We don't like to do that. You know, we always feel probably a little dirty selling ourselves like this is it. You got to do it. You've got to figure out. Just think about it for a minute. What is it about me that makes me different from someone else? Am I, you know, a good a good writer and speaker? Do I have great communication skills? Am I you know, just a really highly technical uh, person? Do I know, uh, you know, pro how to program? What is it that is my brand? Like, what is it that I want people to see about me? Figure that out first, and then build your your resume and and your LinkedIn profile based on that. I'm sure I could go on longer on that one. No, that's great. I mean, I was just thinking as you were saying that it's sometimes it, it sounds like people invest too much in the technical skill. But like if you say, you know, you know, BGP, I mean, everyone, all the network engineers are going to say they know BGP. Right. But if you can differentiate yourself some other way, it's worth spending more time on that. Yeah, there's always what I call the alphabet soup at the top of the resume where we see you know, BGP, OSP, FEA, JRP. But that's another one. Don't put anything in there that you don't know. Yeah. At least not if you're going to interview at Cisco because we will figure it out. You know, there's nothing that looks worse when, you know, when we ask you, okay, you put NetConf Yang on your resume you know, and you're sitting in a room with someone like me who happens to know a lot about it. Um, I've caught quite a few on that one. It looks bad. It's better just not to put it. 
But you know, we have the alphabet soup on the top, and we feel as engineers that's all we need to, to put. Um, you, you know, as I said, everybody has different skills, and you have to figure out what your skill is and what to highlight. But one thing I, I would say to your to your viewers is um, work on developing your soft skills in addition mm -hmm. to your um, engineering skills. They both matter. And when you have a sea of engineers, I don't care, not just for a marketing job. I mean, if you're an, an in-house network engineer, if you can explain yourself clearly, you're not afraid to get up in front of a room in a big meeting and present, um, that sets you above the pack more than anything. Um, if you can teach, you can train other engineers, um, that distinguishes you. That's brilliant. I mean, so that's like CV or sorry, a resume, as you say in the States. Um, interview day. Yeah. Tips, tricks. That's right. Oh, inter interview day? What, what, so I'm coming for the interview. Yeah. So let's say you've, you've, you've seen my, my resume and now you said, okay, you need to come for an interview. How can I do it better? Or what tips would you give me for interview day? All right, I'll switch to CV too, so we can each yeah, try. Are. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we, we, we all we, have our... English, well, well, you know, two nations separated by a common language. That's right. I was in Australia for the first time a couple of months ago, and I, I had to relearn English. Uh, it was very interesting. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, South African English, British English, American English, all I'm now is confused. <laughs> um, well, it, it, for interview day... This is interesting. I actually have a blog and I'm writing. I just started a series of articles on interviewing, technical interviewing. So I'll get, I'll, I'll get Jeff's uh, blog. So yeah. you must give me the links. I'll put them below this video. All right. Um, and I, I have a lot of thoughts on the subject. Part of the problem is when you walk in for an interview, the person you're interviewing with may not have any training or knowledge on how to actually interview someone. Yes. So what network engineers will typically do when they interview is they will ask you, Questions like, you know, tell me all of the LSA types for OSPF and what they do. Um, and I actually, I used to ask questions like that um, once upon a time. And I've decided that they're not very effective because, I mean, it's just book knowledge. And, um, you know, I mean, maybe if I were hiring someone onto you know, the routing protocols team at TAC, I might get into that some of that. I tend to ask more scenario-based questions. So tell me about something you actually did at work that will you know, highlight your skills, and we may get into technical weeds as you explain it. So I'm seeing, you know, okay, the thing you worked on, do you really know? Yes. Okay, so that said, most people don't interview like I do. Right. So you have to be ready for a barrage of, of technical questions. I don't think that's the best way to interview, but you need to, to study for it a bit like you're studying for your CCNA, and at least have that stuff um, ready. One thing I think people need to realize is that uh, the interview is a two-way street and you can assert yourself and take charge a bit in the interview. I mean, don't be a jerk about it, but you can steer it the way you want it to go. Um, so, you know, if you, if you get asked the LSA type question, then you can say, I'll tell you the LSA types. And by the way, let me tell you about a project I did with OSPF that, you know, so you can start to use it to show um, what you have uh, beyond just book knowledge. So you're not really falling into that trap. That's one, one suggestion. Uh, here at Cisco, I don't know about other places, we often make people get up on a whiteboard and um, describe a particular technology. The one thing I always tell people with that is you, you have to Think about it like you're explaining it to you know, somebody who doesn't know, you know, a kid who doesn't know the first thing about networking. People tend to start too deep. Um, so a lot of times I'll let someone pick, you know, pick something on your resume. And, and they, they'll they inevitably pick the most complicated thing because maybe they want to impress me. And then they'll start down in the weeds. Sometimes it's something I've never worked on. I interviewed someone who had worked on 5G. I don't know anything about 5G. And I couldn't follow what he said, which immediately... Yeah. Um, so if you get into that scenario, pick something easy. It's okay to pick HSRP. You know, I'm looking at that point not to see whether you know HSRP. I want to see if you know how to explain something clearly. I don't know if that's just a marketing thing, but we used to do that in TAC even. So I, I think that's a, that's a common one. So let me, I was just thinking about this while you're talking is talk about Cisco. So if I want to work at Cisco, yeah. what do I need to do? Or any tips or tricks or it's, like ideas? I mean, I don't want to make it tips and tricks. It's just like, how can I be better prepared? 
It varies quite a bit by the, the type of job that you're applying for. I, I can tell you what I look for, yeah. um, and I, I've already told you a bit. You know, I'm looking for an external hire. So it's, it actually is interesting for TMEs, uh, technical marketing engineers. We do a lot of in, internal hires, um, partly because you know, we're working with the latest and greatest stuff, and someone yeah. in engineering may know that. But we're actually looking to change that a bit because the nice thing about people who come from a customer, say, is they bring a customer perspective, which we need in developing our product. So that's very valuable to us. The main thing is, you know, what, what makes, again, your resume rise out of the pack um, is how well it's written and presented. Uh, don't go crazy. I mean, I've seen some people who go absolutely crazy with graphic design and it looks ridiculous. But, but well laid out, it's clear. I look at that resume, I get a picture of who you are. I want to see for a TME, um, again, some communication skills. Like, well, you know, have you done any presentations? Um, have you been involved in any groups outside of work? You know, maybe you joined the IEEE and you're mm. doing some, even you're just sitting on a committee reviewing, uh, whatever. I mean, maybe you have a meetup group for network engineers and you presented something there. That kind of stuff I look for. You know, have they done anything outbound? We want to see the technology. I'm not saying don't put the alphabet soup, but keep it very focused on your area of expertise. Um, don't lie. Don't put anything in there again that, that you don't actually know. Um, and read the job description, too. I had a rec open for someone who knew APIs specifically, and I got a lot of generic network engineer resumes. I wanted some with APIs. What do you think about like doing blogs or YouTube oh, videos yeah. or... Very LinkedIn important. posts, is that valuable? Yes, you're a social media guy, so of course you bring that up, and that's actually very valuable. In fact, my blog helped me to get this job. Interesting. There are a lot of people in this uh, group that I work in who've been technical marketing engineers for, for 15 years. Uh, I have not. I was coming from an IT role. I worked um, for the CIO of a company. I was the director of network architecture, so I had a high-level role. Um, but I had my blog, and I had explained a number of interesting technical um, concepts there and clear language and I know that my boss when he was hiring me read the blog um, and felt that it showed you know, I knew what I was doing so blogs YouTube I mean that, that's a great point any anything again outside of, of just yeah I know I know you know the BGP state machine <laughs> is valuable uh, or certifications right which are good but I, I mean anything that helps you get a sense of the person, right? I mean, yeah. you know, in a half an hour interview, you have a very short window. The person is nervous, so you don't always get the best picture. But then you go and they say, oh, I have a YouTube channel. You go start watching the videos and you say, okay, now I've got a sense. They know what they're talking about. Yeah. Or they have a blog. Oh, wow, they write well. They explain things clearly. Um, so that would help here. And I think, again, that would help for any job. Any job. If you have like a portfolio of work. You know, like artists have to have a portfolio. You need a portfolio, something that you can show a potential employer. I mean, I, in, in my job, uh, well, in my sort of situation, if I want to employ a graphic designer, I don't care what degree you've got. Yeah. Like, show me your work. Exactly. Does that still apply, though? Because it's difficult to do that as a network guy. It's difficult. Um, I would say in this case, it's beneficial. I wouldn't say that. Sorry, um, Jeff, we got cut off again. I mean, I was saying, you know, if I want to hire a graphics guy, I say, I don't care what degree you've got, what certification, show me your work. Yeah. It's difficult, though, to do that as a network guy, isn't it? Or yeah, and I don't want to steer people the wrong way, like, oh, I should just go make a bunch of YouTube videos and not study the technology. I mean, fundamentally, we want to know that you're technologically sound for the area that you're looking uh, or applying for. So do get your certifications, do study, uh, do um, work on projects that are relevant. Uh, but beyond that, again, it's about distinguishing yourself and it's about us getting a sense of you as a person. So a portfolio of, of, of work um, outside of your, your job and certifications, I guess is all part of your portfolio, right? But something else beyond that that helps us get a sense of you, um, it's very valuable. I'm going to ask you the elephant in the room okay. question now. So are you ready? I'm ready. This is the US. I'm not, I don't live in the U.S., but this is the U.S., and people in the U.S. tell me that this is a problem. Degrees or certs? If I want a job, do I have to get a degree? Or would you, is a cert enough? Or, you know, what's your opinion? You know, should I go for a degree, four-year degree, or should I get a certification like go for CCIE or putting you on the spot here? But just your opinion. 
Uh, yeah, so my, my opinion, not official Cisco policy. I, I have both. I have a master's degree and a bachelor's degree. Um, my bachelor's degree is in political science. So that's kind of related to networking? <laughs> Absolutely not at all. Uh, my master's degree is telecommunications management, which is somewhat relevant. It was technical and business, but the technical stuff is all, I mean, I graduated from that in 2000, so it's not relevant anymore. Yeah. My, my own feeling is that the value of a university degree is, is overstated a bit. Um, it is. So first of all, there aren't that many programs that, ha uh, that have specifically a networking major. There are some out there. But most universities just have general computer science. Um, now that's valuable. I mean, again, especially moving into a programming kind of a world. Yeah. But if you come to me with just a computer science degree and no networking background, um, it could be hard to get hired. Uh, whereas if someone came to you with no bachelor's degree and um, some certifications, uh, that gives me an idea of a baseline of what knowledge they have. Now, that said, a number of jobs, including uh, many of the ones that we have, require a bachelor's degree uh, and possibly even a master's. Um, I wouldn't mind changing that. I think, I think we might. Um, I think there are parts of Cisco that have changed that because I'm mostly interested in do you know um, do you know your your stuff now that said I was a liberal arts major and I do think that there's great value in in the liberal arts um, because you learn how to write and, and speak and all of that so if you don't have the BA or the BS that forces you to um, to do that then you should hopefully have acquired those skills somewhere else I do think that could show through again in the interview, in you know, YouTube work, and blogs, and other other ways. So I think that's a world we should move towards. Is okay, you know, you don't have you don't have the bachelor's degree, but show me that you have at least decent communication skills. You know? I mean, it, it seems to be. I mean, a lot of guys, uh, my U.S. viewers, will say, "Look, David, it's all very good and well to say get certs, but I have to get a degree to get yeah. through the door because, like you just said, Cisco have these requirements. You know, you have to get a degree." I mean, it's, it's nice to hear that that may change because I think I'm this, I agree with you. I mean, for me, I studied accountancy. I mean, and I mean, information systems, but I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not regretting it like you. You know, those kind of skills are very valuable in business, but it's got nothing to do with networking. Right. You know, ultimately, it's about uh, who you are and, again, about just making it clear that you have what a particular job needs. Every job is going to require some level of communication skills and, and you know, every job you mentioned, I mean, every, you know, a technical marketing, having a business knowledge is good. It's valuable because we're steering the business. Um, so in my opinion, if you go watch Khan Academy videos on YouTube or something and learn all that material, I'm fine. You know, why does it have to come from a university? So, I mean, if I applied for your, for a position in your team, if I don't have a degree, I'm not even going to get looked at. Is that right? Or does, is there a way to get around that? So I think currently we require it. I do think we require it. But again, I, I'm one of the more vocal ones that I don't think we should. So I can't make any promises there, but sure. you know, I think it's something we should change. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, I mean, from a, someone in, in Europe, living in Europe, looking at the U.S., it looks like this whole, like we won't get into the political side yeah. of things, but this whole like debt that people take on for their degrees in the US seems, from my point of view, crazy. But I mean, it seems that guys have to, to get through the door. So it'll be good to see that change at some point. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good point. It, you, you start off in a bad place when you begin your career with a mountain of debt. Um, that's a problem too. And plenty to say on that, but probably in a, we will in leave a, that for a different time. YouTube video. Oh, no, definitely. <laughs> so tell me about dress code. Is, I mean, I, if I, I, I'm in dressed in jeans and, a, and like a golf shirt. If I come for a technical interview at Cisco or, you know, in your experience interviewing people, is that okay in the U.S. or do I need to come in a suit? My, my first, so this is my second time at Cisco. My first time uh, I went to interview at TAC. Uh, I think I wore a sport coat, no tie. Uh, but I came for my first day of work and I was just wearing my usual lace-up shoes and uh, and I think I was wearing a collared shirt like this, and one of the tat guys looked at me and said, "Ah, you're dressing up for the job, huh? Leather shoes. You're not wearing, you're not wearing sneakers or runners or whatever you call them." Uh, so Cisco, for the most part, is very casual, especially for engineers. 
Uh, I, I think no one's going to look down on you if you show up for your uh, interview in a suit, but nobody's going to require you, and frankly, most people don't show up in a coat and tie. I think it's, it's good to look presentable. I mean, it's your interview day. You want to show that you care a little bit. Um, I, I would say you, you don't need to wear a tie, uh, but you know, if, if you're not wearing a sport coat uh, for men, I mean, obviously women... Um, you know, it, it can be different. That's actually another another subject. If you want to talk about diversity, I can talk about that quite a bit. But um, I think that, you know, looking professional, you know, clean professional, uh, if you're wearing jeans, I don't think you're going to get thrown out the door. Uh, I don't think anyone's even going to notice. Jeff, I mean, I know we're probably running out of time now. I really want to thank you so much for sharing your, your knowledge. I mean, originally we were going to talk about uh, like uh, CCIE versus, uh, well, SDN is like killing CCIE, but I'm really glad we spoke about jobs because that's something that really pe a lot of people you know, want to know about. So thanks yeah. so much for sharing your experience and knowledge. Yeah, and thanks for your time. I appreciate it. it. Thanks. Great. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's great. Wanna shake the ground.